characters start out traveling through the Spine of the World Mountains, which is here on the map, on a journey into Icewind Dale and into Ten Towns. Actually, before we even start that part, uh, between adventures, so before we start, you can do any buy, buying and selling you want to do. You'll all start with a potion of healing that will last for this adventure and then be gone, and you'll all start with inspiration. So take care of that buying and selling, and then the adventure begins with you guys traveling through a mountain pass. Uh, Tom, uh, at the beginning of every day, uh, Helia casts her Blessing of the Forge on her armor, giving her a plus one to armor class. Cool. Dalson, do you want to do uh, Mage Armor at the beginning of every day? And does anyone else? Uh, after short rest, I'd like to do Inspiring Leader, but we'll get to that. Okay. All right. Then let's go through. Okay, so your travel, your caravan is winding through uh, rocky peaks, narrow paths, wide saddles between the mountains. Deep snow is being driven off the peaks, towering above you by the constantly howling winds. It's quite possibly the deepest winter this part of the world has seen in living memory. And this may be a flashback for Dawson and Tony, but uh, think about why you guys are here, and we'll do character intros, starting with Kralin. Go ahead, Kralin. Oh. But on the spot, um, Kralin is a furball cleric, and uh, being trained to be uh, the uh, priest or shaman of his tribe is set out to learn more and experience uh, some of the world, which has led him to this uh, uh, frozen wasteland to uh, try to learn all the different elements and uh, nature's different sides. Okay, next to go is Dalson. Yes, Dalson is led up north after uh, living a life in uh, scholarly studies, uh, searching for a lost love who he thinks he ran into, who he thinks ran into a hag and now wears her around her throat in a trapped in a medallion. Huh. All right, next is Helia. Elia is a dwarven uh, forge master from Clan Babblehammer, um, but she's not been back home to Kelvin's Cairn in a number of years. Uh, she's been uh, trekking around Icewind Dale and the Spine of the World Mountains looking for uh, the finest materials to craft a suit of armor uh, worthy of her que queen um, that she's madly in love with. All right, and Tony. Tony Garzoni at your service. I'm a human paladin of the Order of Sigma. Uh, my order has blessed me with the soul of a phoenix and sent me to the north to face the cold and those that hide in it. Uh, you may have heard of my younger brother, Daniel. He's uh, currently in Avernus, but uh, we don't we don't talk too much nowadays. I hope I hope he's doing well. And last but not least, or maybe least, is the little kobold Z relic. So Zarelk looks around. Hi. Uh, he will tell you that he grew up on the streets of Ten Towns, and um, kind of was uh, not the best of kids. And then he had a, an inspiration to do, to do better. And he probably went into the mountains to try to learn something and and better himself. And now he's coming back to Ten Towns to prove that he's he was worth all the table scraps that he was given as a child. All right, so your group has been traveling with this caravan, coming from um, Hundlestone up through the Spine of the World Mountains. And it's in the Spine of the World Mountains about 2 in the afternoon as you're traveling. Um, the sun is setting behind you to the south and because you're so far north. And ahead of you is just snow and clouds and ice when you hear a thunderous crack from above followed by the snapping of evergreen trees as a huge wave of ice snow and debris crashes down to engulf the caravan like a nightmare of a white dragon breath so in the split seconds that you have before it strikes 
Kralin, do you want to do anything? You have like about the time of a round. Uh, and I see that there is a avalanche coming down. Um, uh, but everybody notices, right? Yes. I don't know if there's a whole lot I can do. People um, are diving out of the wagons, jumping underneath them, you know, huddling together, crying, screaming. Okay. Um, I mean, if there's any, I'm trying to think if I can help like shelter uh some of uh maybe like some kids or some weaker people okay good you go to try and help some people the avalanche dawson what do you want to do i want to go off mute and then um cast i'm going to try and cast thunder wave to blast a uh uh opening in the uh, avalanche good hell yeah what do you want to do I'm going to uh, cast Guidance on myself and uh, take refuge behind a uh, um, wagon. Tony, what do you want to do? I will try and calm the people down and establish order in getting people places. <laughs> See, Ralph, what do you want to do? Uh, I'll probably try to dive for uh, for cover, try to get uh, so I don't get the brunt of the avalanche. Got it. Maybe one of the wagons or something. Okay. Um, let's see here. Kralin, make an athletics check for me. Strength athletics. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're able to uh, block the brunt of the avalanche uh, from crashing down um, upon one young kid that you see in the avalanche. And you two are protected as you tumble to the end, but you get separated, unfortunately. Um, you're going to get advantage on initiative on the first round of what's going to come next. Uh, all of a sudden, okay. you smash the avalanche with a thunder wave, giving you a, advantage on initiative for the first round. Hell yeah, you have guidance going uh, when the battle starts. Tony, you're trying to uh, achieve order. Do a persuasion check or intimidation your choice. Uh, persuasion. Hmm. Unfortunately, mm. panicked individuals don't listen to you, so you'll start normal initiative. And z you're trying to find some place to hide from the avalanche. You can do either survival or stealth, your choice. Okay, so you find a good cubbyhole to hide in, so you're going to have advantage. Okay, so the four of you guys will have advantage. So let's go to roll initiative now. Just click your token, uh, click the initiative button twice and type in the higher of the two numbers, if the first one was higher than the second one. Seven. Everyone get your higher number typed in, if you had an, if you had advantage. So Dave, you could, yeah, there you go. Okay, so the avalanche comes cascading down, tumbling you guys uh, with it, and we're going to start with you in a group here, just randomly spread around like that. You can see all around you the remains of the avalanche, and... The grinding roar of the avalanche subsides, and you dig out and try to shake the snow off of you, but it is packed inside your clothes. Felled trees, tumbled boulders, mounds of snow, and wreckage of the caravan surround you. There are a few other survivors. A shivering man is partially buried in the snow on the edge of a precipice. The snow is starting to fall off of the edge. That's this man up here. A warrior is threatened by hungry wolves. That's this warrior over here. He's trying to don his armor, but the wolves are closing in on him and a woman is crying for help from beneath an overturned wagon and her cries are weakening. That's this woman over here. You might have at most 30 seconds to save these three individuals. I'm going to roll some initiatives for the wolves. And the people. Oops. Shoot. They'll all go on 10. All right. So, Craylin, you are first stacked. All around you is difficult terrain because of all the 
bounds of uh, broken rubble and snow and such. You can see um, you can see the wolves to your southwest, the man to your north, and the woman to your east. What do you want to do, Kralin? Uh, um, I'm going to... Uh, let me first start by uh, casting Shillelagh okay. on my staff. Done. And uh, difficult terrain. Correct. Okay. Um, guess I'll rush towards the warrior trying to get his armor on. He he was one of the uh guys traveling with us, I assume, right? He was. Yeah, he was a guard for the caravan. Okay. Um, technical question. Uh, since I use Shillelagh as my bonus action, can I use Sacred Flame as my action? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I will start to move a bit closer. And. I'll uh, cast Sacred Flame on that closest one. Okay, the closest wolf tries to dodge out the flames from he the heavens and does. After Kralin. Dawson. Okay, I don't like my chances of lifting that wagon, so I am going to go up towards the person who's fallen off the precipice. I'll uh, dash up there and try and get a hand on him. You got it. I think you went two, one too many squares for a dash. It's all difficult terrain all the way. It's all difficult terrain. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that puts me there then. All right, Dawson dashes up to help. Hell yeah, your turn. Um, Tony, uh, are you going to go after the spellcaster? Uh, Spillaria? Uh, I could, yeah. What okay. danger is the Spillaria in? She's crying for help from beneath the wagon and her cries gotcha. are getting weaker. Yep. Probably getting crushed underneath that wagon. Alright, then I'm gonna go try to help. I'm more of a warrior, so I'm gonna go try to help with the wolves. Okay. Two, four, and I'm a dash. Six, eight, ten. To there. After hell yeah, Tony. Sorry. Yelling I will, out. uh... Make my way downtown to Spilaria. <laughs> Dash in that way. Dash gets me there. All right, after you, the wolves growling at the man, but now seeing these yelling people coming towards them. Um, turn their attention your way. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one dashes there onto Helia. Then the one close circles around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to there and attacks Helia with a bite. 17 does not get you though, right? Correct, that misses. Z Relk, your turn. Okay. Um, I guess I can go up to here. That looks like that was good enough. And I'll pull out my dagger and I'll say, leave us alone! Oh, is, I should say, is there? do we have bright light? Uh, no, Am it's dim. Somewhere? It was like, even though it was like only about 2 or 3 p.m., the sun was setting and now it's pretty dim and gray overcast. Okay, so I would have, since I have pack tactics, I think I have advantage for like that 20. That hit. After Z Relic, the last of the wolves here in the tussle with its companion wolves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, eight, eight. is circling around behind Z Relic. That round is over. So the warriors now, with the wolves off of him, is donning his armor. The woman is uh, just faintly, one last cry for help you hear, Tony. The man, Antonio there, Dawson, is like oblivious to the danger he's in um, and searching around. It looks like he's looking around the snow for something. That's the end of round one. Round two, Kralin. All right, I will step up and intercept this wolf. And uh, I'm going to smack it with my staff. I'm assuming a seven misses. That's right. After you, Dawson. Okay, Dalson, so you get to the man. Uh, he is buried up to his, like, chest in the snow. And uh, 
he turns, he sees you, and he says, um, I need help. I can't get out. And he's looking for something? Yeah, my flask. I need to get my flask, too. So, if you want to look around, that'd be a perception check. If you want to try and get him out of there, that would be an athletics check. And I can do one or the other? Correct. Okay, well, it sounds like he wants his flask, so I'll look for that. Okay, go ahead. And I will not find it. No, you don't. You don't see it anywhere looking around. He's starting to get really anxious for it. And then, hell yeah, your turn. I'm going to smack the one directly north of me. 21 for 7. You kill it. That wolf's dead. I'll move up to here. Go ahead, Tony. Okay. Okay, so Tony, you get to the woman. Ma'am, she, are you hurt? She is indeed uh, suffocating underneath the wagon. It's like pressing down on her chest. Uh, it'd be a athletics check to get her or get it off of her. But due to the abundance of the piled snow all around, it's going to be with disadvantage. Hmm. DC 11 athletics with disadvantage. Oh, easy. Oh, Never yeah. worried. You throw the wagon off of her. She crawls out from underneath it and she is saved. If you have a movement left, you can go try to help the others. I think I did one, two, and that'll put me back one. Okay, one of the two remaining wolves um, circles around to there, attacks Kralin with advantage, crits Kralin, does ten points of damage to him, drops oh, him, oh, no. <laughs> drops him into the snow. <laughs> Z-Relic, your turn. Oh, um, you know what? Actually, I don't think I'm going to kill you right now, um, but I will um, stab again at the wolf. I still have an ally adjacent. 18 so connects. Four, Four damage, got it. Okay, then this wolf comes to there to attack z Rock with a bite. Creating z Rock and dropping him to the ground. Goodness the gracious. Snow. And Kralin, your turn. That's save Kralin. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that's one the wrong success. one. Oh yeah, that was initiative. Do the next one over. One success. I got my initiative. Uh, Kralin was top of the round, right? So I got to do the. Okay, so the warrior's still donning his armor. The woman's safe. Uh. The guy there is looking for his flask still, Dalson. Um, has he found it? He has not found it. Kralin is living, hanging on to consciousness, or hanging on to life. And then Dalson, your turn. So you can try and get him out with athletics or find his flask with a perception. Um, wow, I'm going to be terrible at either of those uh, tasks. I'm going to... Mm, do I have inspiration? I'm going to look for the flask with using my inspiration. Okay. So, at least I get a 12. Okay. Um, that is a success. You found the flask. So you hold on to it. Now he just needs help getting out. And... Hell yeah, your turn. All right. My action, I'm going to uh, smack the wolf to the southwest. Or southeast. Okay. 18 for six. That's a hit. Six still doesn't drop it, though. Dang it. Uh, bonus action, I'm going to uh, cast Healing Ward on Zarelk. Okay. Three That's hit points back, good. Zarelk. Tony, your turn. You can see right. uh, You can uh, see from move. your vantage point that uh, Helia is fighting off two wolves by herself. Uh, she just raised back the kobold, though, and Dawson up to the north is fumbling around looking for a flask instead of getting that guy out of harm's way. They're both going to fall off the cliff, as far as you can tell. Okay. Um, That's a small priority. Well, these are not the dogs that Tony likes. These dogs are not fun dogs. 
So he's going to uh, whistle over to the one to the east of Helia. Okay. As he... Ooh, hold on. Wait, let me read the spell one more time. Uh, do, 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 do. If it doesn't understand your language. Hmm. Do, I'm guessing beasts don't typically understand common. Correct. Okay. And uh, I'm going to holler that I've got the wolves. You help uh, save those two up there. Okay, then I will just dash on up. Dash into the north. Wolf's turn. Okay, they got blood in the snow, so they're going after Helia now with um, a bite. 13 does not get through her armor, though. Zarelk, your turn. You lie prone in the snow, your dagger by your side. Alright, I will... Um, I will... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to my other fallen companion, mm -hmm. and I'm going to lay on hands for uh, two hit points. Okay. So you got two back, Kralin. And um, then what am I going to do? I'm going to have to get up, but I'm going to have to move square, and I'll probably provoke an opportunity attack. So. Um, have to move, or can he stay? He can stay where he's at. You can stay where you're at and attack with his spanish, or actually you've been attacking straight up. Is he relic? Well, actually, I can't attack because that's my action to do lay on hands. Oh, so, great. So, um... I'll just stay on the prone... I'll just stay and cover my head pro yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the wolf's turn, attacking Helia uh, with a bite. <laughs> 23 hit Helia for 4 points damage. Helia that's make an 11 strength save to stay standing. And uh, I had four temp hit points, correct? Oh, Tony, you gave everyone yep. temp hit points? So Kralin might not have been down. I would not have been. Okay. Don't forget your tempies. Don't forget your four temp hit points. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to use uh, my Thank guidance on the strength down. check. So you guys with uh, who did not take off the four temp hit points, you can either add four hit points to your current total or add four temp hit points back on your guy. Actually, just add four hit points to your current total. Uh, with guidance, I would pass that. Uh, it's a strength save, though. Oh, it's a save. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought it was strength check. Okay, so, so you're prone. Um, first wolf is done, and that runs over. And, okay, then the guy's trying to get out, struggling to get out, but he can't do it. Uh, next go is Kralin. You think, um, everyone, that you have this round and maybe the next to save the man on the edge of the precipice. So, Kralin, go ahead. All right. Well, I see uh, I see Togna going up there, so I will stand up, and uh, I guess I'll take a swing at the uh, one to my west. And my shillelagh's still up, is that right? Um, mm -hmm. I think so. Uh... 11 for 10, I'm assuming 11 misses. It does miss. Okay, after Kralin, Dawson. Okay, I'm going to attempt to uh, ask, pull this guy out of the okay. snow. Athletics check. This is going to be a heroic effort here. Oh, you do. With a 13 Not succeed. Not bad. And drag and turn you out, and you uh, bring him back to safety with this flask. Well done. So now you just got those two wolves. Let's see. That was your action, and that's about as far as you can move. So I think that's it, unless you have a bonus, Dawson. Sounds good. Okay, hell yeah, your turn. Uh, hell yeah, going to smack the injured one. 14 for 5. 14 dropped it. For 5 dropped it. I'm going to stay here, straddling Zarelk. And After hell yeah, Tony. I'll move up one, two, three, and give him a good old uh, flail. 20, okay, for, 20 seven. for seven. And then Zarelk, your turn. Okay, I will get up and I will stand up. And then I will swing 21 for three. Three is still damage. standing. Then the wolf's turn. It tries to flee up into the snow, 
and you guys could probably cut it down with a ranged attack if you like, or let it flee. Your call. I'm not going to bother. I'm with guessing it. it's disengaging. Yeah, disengaging when it okay. starts. Yeah. I'll let it flee. Okay. If anyone wants to kill it, just speak up. Otherwise, it flees into the snow. All right. So you have Antonio, and Warren joins you just after the battle ends with his armor finally buckled up. Spilaria comes over. They're all exhausted. You guys look for other survivors, including the children, Kralin, that you had helped to protect, but you're not able to find any other survivors amongst the snow. You do look around and see... Um, let's see, that's what the people are. Okay, so looking around. Um, so night's falling as you're searching through the wreckage. The survivors are just too exhausted to continue. They suggest searching for supplies and making camp with what you find, and that you can decide what to do next in the morning. You spot the shiny brass fittings of a sturdy lockbox, partially buried in the snow. You spot a potion box. Most of the vials uh, within have broken and spilled down to the snow, creating a slick, a faintly glowing liquid in eye-searing rainbow. Uh, the vial contains a bead of red liquid that bobs lazily within, pulsing rhythmically. Uh, someone's got like music or singing in the background. I think it's a saxophone. Sorry, I, I need to go on mute. My son's practicing. Ah, gotcha. Okay, thanks. Um... You spot a sturdy wooden crate with a partial label indicating its intended recipient resides somewhere in Icewind Dale, but the name is gone. All right. So, with those th items that you found, what do you guys want to do? I'll uh, test out the uh, potion. Okay. Taking a sip of the potion, you determine that it is a potion of growth. So it mimics the enlarged spell. Hmm. Great. Can I open it? Oh, the crate, yes. So the crate, uh, you'll have to pry it open, but you're able to find a crowbar and such to pry it open with. And inside, you find um, this note. And I'll blow a bigger one out here for you. There we go. It says, Jordan, I've heard things are getting worse in the Icewind Dale. I'm so worried about you and want you to come home until this blows over. Um, I know you're a big adventurer now, but I hope these help if you decide to stay. I love and miss you, Mom. Inside is a knitted pink cap and mittens size for an adult, a package of verbal cough drops, leather boot laces, and a package of home-baked chocolate chip cookies. All right, and then lastly, the lockbox. Any of you guys proficient with thieves tools and have thieves tools? I'm proficient. I can make you thieves tools. I will uh, do uh, my um, channel divinity to make a set of tools. Artisan's blessing. Very cool. Okay. okay. Uh, then go ahead and make a dexterity um, check with proficiency bonus added in Zerok. Could I guidance him before that? You bet. Oops. Consider it done. There you go. Okay. That plus an extra at least one gets you there. You're able to open up the lockbox. Inside you find a pouch of blue velvet filled with silver from the city of Luskin, being uh, one of the last big cities on the Sword Coast that you left behind. All right, so with the gear all packaged up, it's going to be a cold, cold night. There's no shelter really to be had. So... Um... How big is the crate? How big is the crate? Uh, not too big. You can carry it with you. It's like the size of a shoebox, actually. Oh, okay. I think it might be bigger. I was going to hide in the crate. Just like big box. Right. All right. Well, I give you a little preview of what you find in the morning. So we'll say you actually find that as you're getting camp made that night. Um, there's tracks of a rather large creature circling around uh, the area where that warrior was. Um, he must have left just before that thing got him. Anyone want to make a nature check? If you're trained with nature, you can make an intelligence nature check. 
Nope. Nope. Yeah. Not nature. Dawson, you don't know for sure what it is. Okay, so you gotta prep your camp for the night because it's gonna be cold, cold, cold. So, hell yeah, you have any special ideas for doing that or any skill I, in survival? I am going to use my campfire ice sculpture, uh, which will heat up heat enough for four of us to remain comfortably warm. Okay. So, uh, do you want to take the three people you found or party members? Uh, I'll take the three people we found and take care of them as uh, okay. seasoned adventurers. I'm sure the others. I'm are sure you're right. Yeah. Well, able to take care of themselves. Craylin, what what can you do? Uh, could I uh, using like my survival skill? Could I uh, maybe try to find maybe the best way where you know, block the most wind using the trees or? Yep, sure can. Make a survival check yeah. for me. I mean, you for sure know all the basics, but maybe you might pull off, oh yeah, pull off a few tricks to protect the other people in your care. And so you all are going to be safely making it through the night. Well, not absolutely safely, but mostly safely. Uh, the next morning, I need you each to make... So long rest, I take it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you all get a long rest. Tempies. I need you all to make a DC 11 constitution saving throw with advantage. Everyone gets to do it with advantage. Tony's good, Zarok's good, Elia's good, Dawson's good. Constitution saving throw. Constitution save, Kralin's good. It was a DC 11, yep. And then we got your uh, three companions left to right. DC 20, one, two, three. Middle one didn't, but he's got advantage. Still didn't. So that is Belaria has one level of exhaustion from the cold. Okay, and they got a long rest in, so they're all fully healed up to max hit points. So they can share a little bit about themselves, too, in the morning as you guys are cooking breakfast. Um, you have Warren, who was one of the guards for the caravan. And he um, tells you he served, used to serve as a temple guard down south in uh, Baldur's Gate. And he was just kind of ran into some trouble, some politics there uh, amongst the uh, the guards, and so he decided that it'd be best for him to uh, come up north. And then you got um, the spellcasteress Belaria. She's actually uh, knows a few minor wizard spells. Dalson, you find out she knows Firebolt and Light, and she can also cast Sleep twice a day. Um, but that's the extent of her training so far. She grew up in the streets of Waterdeep and kind of had to teach herself how to read and obtain um, spells stuff. And she actually got work at Candlekeep. In order to become a full-fledged member of the Avow there in Candlekeep, she's making the trek up to Icewind Dale to search for ancient Netherese tomes and relics. And then lastly, you got... Well, I'm very excited about this. Lastly, you got Antonio... Antonio is uh, a smith by trade, he tells you, um, or at least his father was, and um, ran into some trouble there with some business competitors with my dad, so I decided I was going to come up north because I don't imagine there's too many uh, traded smiths up here. I've also heard rumors of long forgotten ruins with ancient treasures ripe for plunder, he says. Um, I start quizzing him about his smithcraft. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, he shares trade with you. Oh, and he's got thieves' tools and a loot. So he could help you open up that lockbox if you needed it. All right. Uh, he can also use a bonus action to take the help action. So he'll be handy. He'll hang around with any of you guys doing anything and try to help you out. He's pretty good with tools and such. Okay, so the next day. A 
again, everyone should be at full hit points. Um, tap hit points. How many people do you get, Tony? Uh, ooh, good question. I six, think it's right? six. Dawson, are you going to bring your owl out? Yes, I would like to do that. I, uh, I thought you'd forgotten. I never forget a familiar. I've always got my eye on them. <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect any less. Nope. Okay, Tony, you want to do is familiar or one of the three people that you saved? Let's do the warrior. Warrior, okay. So he's got four temps. I put the temps in that gray circle there just as a number since mm -hmm. the temps don't really have a max. Okay. Uh, so there's Dalson and the next day. Day two. Okay, so thunder rattles overhead as snow, sky, and land blend in white, white out conditions. Lightning causes irregular bursts of light that makes seeing even harder. In the distance, you can make out the dark shape of a mountain peak looming overhead. Perhaps you can be able to find shelter there. You'll have disadvantage on perception checks to hear due to the incessant thunder and wind. Um, you can tell uh, if you're trained in survival, make a survival check, please. Ooh, I am. Wisdom survival. Nope. Yeah, Tony, Ooh. you think the blizzard's going to hit in full force in just a uh, matter of hours, so you guys need to get to some shelter. So... Uh, you set out that morning, you do your armor, you do your mage armor, set out across the snowy uh, terrain towards that mountainside, hopefully, to find a cave. Uh, after you've traveled about an hour, I need Tony, you to roll a d4, please. Okay. All right, then I'm going to need a marching order. So. I can take up the front. Let me grab your guys, move you down the map here. Okay, so you're traveling along uh, with your lead person where I put Tony and everyone else behind him. So everyone behind Tony, wherever he might be in the march order. The warrior, Spolari or the Spolaria will stay somewhere near the middle. Warrior will be talking with Tony. And Antonio will hang out with Helia wherever she goes. I'm good where I'm at. All right. So you've traveled about an hour when uh, the wind abates. But moments later, sparkling snowflakes the size of dinner plates lazily drift down from the storm above. While beautiful, they're razor sharp. Then the wind picks back up and sends the snowflakes whizzing around the area, cutting off tree limb from evergreen trees or worse. So everyone roll wow. initiative for me, please. My macro's working again. Good. Good, good, good. Dawson, you are, you're quick to dodge out of the way of any snowflakes whizzing about. Uh, you look around the sky, and it looks like this is passing through. It might last, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds before it's gone, but you're going to have to be dodging the snowflakes while that happens. Anything you want to do besides uh, dodging snowflakes? No, I'm going to dodge, and I'm going to send Oliver up, um, see if he can fly above the snow. Okay. It doesn't look like he can. Your action, you could suck him into his, his uh, extra-dimensional space. Okay. Then I will uh, pack him up. Pack him up. Okay, so that's your action instead of dodging. And then and you guys don't really need to move, because you're not going to be able to move out of it, unfortunately. 
Uh, so Dawson, you're, you're packed up your familiar. Um, then, um, initial count 20. Snowflakes whiz around toward a random creature in the area and attack. Okay, so I'll just roll d10 here. One, two, three, Graylin. You got one coming your way. And it is... Tony, you're not next to him. So it's yeah, uh, okay. d20 plus three. Snowflake, it's a 22 to hit you. Graylin. And it does... Four points of slashing damage to you. Bye-bye, Timps. That's Graylin's done. That's why they're there. Antonio, your turn. Oh, and that's me. He'll dodge. <laughs> Spillary will dodge. Warren will dodge. Sorel, your turn. Is there a specific direction the snow seems to be going with the wind, or is it kind of a swirling wind? Uh, it's swirling, yeah. Okay. So I'll just dodge. Dodging? Okay, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll duck behind my shield and dodge out of the way. Okay. And then Tony? I'll dodge. Uh, Dalson? Still dodging. Okay, so I think that's everyone dodging. So there'll just be two more chances of the snowflakes hitting you guys, and they'll have disadvantage on their attacks. And it's going to hit number four, number three, which is Kralin again, with disadvantage. Uh, good thing. Eight misses. And then Dalson. Fourteen and eight. Eight's going to miss. All right. So you guys hunker down, dodge these uh, snowflakes, and... Uh, it passes. You're able to get back on your trek, looking for, and the the snows blow in heavy again as soon as they pass. Um, so after about another hour of trekking, go ahead and set up your marching order again. If you moved at all, we'll use the same map here. After another hour of travel, the blizzard calms slightly. The swirling snow around you moves in odd patterns before opening into lambent yellow-orange eyes burning with malice. Uh, you see, perched on the edges of the cliffs that just kind of come into view through the snow, these guys. They're all 20 feet up these cliff sides. Um, but then they all take to the air and come flying down towards you. If you're training Arcana, make an Arcana check. Ooh. Okay, Dawson. These aren't natural owls. They are some sort of elemental creatures conjured out of the snow. Um, they're probably here to destroy all life that passes through. and But they have just a spark of an arcane presence in him, kind of like your owl does, uh, except this one's kind of not as strong as your owl's. It's hateful, but it's also fearful. Could be uh, scared away, potentially. Uh, if there's something you have that could scare it. And everyone roll initiative. So are you going to take a shield on the first attack every time? Uh, yeah, if okay. it's on the warrior. Gotcha. But not Dawson. He's out of luck. Mm, we'll see how I feel. Okay. <laughs> All right. The first owl swoops down from its perch to Spilaria's position, tax her with talons. A 14 will hit Spilaria. Nine points of slashing damage cuts her down. She falls down in the snow, dying. Oh, wait. No, she wouldn't have any attempts. That's right. Uh, so, zero. And then it flies back up to its perch on the cliffside. Second owl. To the north, swoops down to attack Zerok. Talons on the kobold. 17 hit him for 11 slashing. Don't forget your attempts. I think you'll live through it. Yep. Yeah. It has fly-by attack, like all good owls do, so it does not provoke as it flies back. Okay, uh, Dawson, your turn. And you're muted if you're talking. 
Um, I'm going to try and scare away these um, owls. Um, I'd like to go up to close to one of them and uh, shoot a uh, thunder wave up and uh, see if the racket alarms it. Fire away. Ooh, good damage. Uh, 13 con save for half. Fails its 13 con save. Takes 16 points of thunder damage. And gets pushed 10 feet, so it basically knocked up into the air to 30 feet. And looks Take very that. very disconcerted, and so do the two owls by it. Uh, the ones across the way don't seem disconcerted. Um, anything else, Dawson? Well, since it's... Uh... Going back, is this difficult terrain? No, no, it's not. Retreat a little bit, and that's it. Okay, the owl to the south here is disconcerted for that round, uh, but it sticks around, so this owl down here does nothing this round. Antonio, your turn. That's you. Can you mute, David? Thanks. Uh, okay, I kind of he that will. Was very uh, mood appropriate. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, let's see, he's going to use his bonus action to give Warren a help action should he attack uh, this owl. Uh, it's not going to matter. He's going to go over to here and ask if anyone has a potion of healing that he can give to Spalaria. I'll toss him mine. Uh, he's got enough move. He'll get to get over to you, grab yours. So take off your potion marker there. He'll give it to Spalaria. That'll be 2d4 plus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So she's back up to 7. Okay. So he's done. And Warren's turn. He's just going to ready an action to attack if anything gets adjacent to him. And then Spalaria's turn. She's going to stand up. And she's going to try and cast Sleep on one of the uh, clusters of owls to the west. So, surely she'll get one of them. That's what, 5d8, right? Yep. 25 hit points to these things. And Dave, do you have sleep? Dawson? I don't have sleep. No, okay. I think it affects elementals. So this owl here is sleeping up in his perch. Okay, so she's done, and next to go is Owls. Uh, this one to the north here is disconcerted by that thunderous boom that just happened. Then we got uh, this one in the middle. He comes swooping down to attack Kralin, or no, to attack Helia with its talons. 22 Helia. That does hit. Eight points of slashing, don't forget your temps. Then flies back up to there. And then Tony, your turn. All right, Tony is going to cast less on uh, Spirelia has Firebolt, she said, right? She does. On Spirelia, uh, Helia, and let's just make it Zarelic. Zarelic, okay. So you guys all have Bless, plus D4 to all your attacks. Be ready to roll that for him, Tony. Yep. And then Zarelic, your turn. hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I think I lost the voice there. All right, I'm going to try something. Uh, I'm going to pull out a torch and light it. And I don't know if I can still do this in the same round. Kind of wave it over my head in a menacing fashion. Okay. Done. Uh, Zerok's done that. Hell yeah, your turn. Okay. Um... The one that's almost dead, is that also the one that's uh, kind of stunned? Yeah, that's the one that got hit by the Thunder Wave. And it's actually flying away, it looks like. Okay, very good. Um, then, going after me is Kralin. And where are you at, Kralin? Right there. So I'm going to... This one's not asleep. No Correct. Problem. Okay, alright. I'm going to Guiding Bolt that one right there. Okay. That's Guidance, not Guiding Bolt. So that's uh, 12, uh, 15 to hit. That hit. For 12 radiant damage. Got and it. whoever attacks it next has advantage. All right. 
Then after Helia, the out of the south swoops down to attack Helia. Talon's onto the dwarf. Twelve's a miss, yep. and then swoops back up. And then Kralin, your turn. <clears throat> um, does uh, what Zerok look like? Does is what he d is doing looks like it's being effective at all, or um, hard to say. Uh, the Alcos to him is asleep, and the other ones haven't attacked that direction yet. Okay. Uh, then I'll just back up Helia. I'll uh, go ahead and cast Shillelagh on my staff and ready an attack whenever one uh, gets close. Okay, you are ready. Next to go, round two, is the owl that flies away. Then we got the owl to the north that's asleep, and then Dawson. Okay, well let's um let's go in the other direction and try the same stunt over here. Bam. That is the worst damage ever. Uh con save. Failed it, killed it. You did the one to your south, right? Yes. Killed it. And you could have done that from here, which was not up the cliff. Uh, yeah, fair enough. And then finish your move where you want. Backing up and done. Okay, then we got Owl. Owl to the south, no longer disconcerted, comes flying down here to attack Helio. Talons onto the dwarf, misses. And then Antonio has got everyone back in the fight, so he's going to turn and try and shoot. None of them are injured at all, so shoot the one to the east there. You going to shoot the, the one that he has advantage on? Uh, that one's dead. Ah, oh, boo. Okay. I wasn't paying attention to what <laughs> Uh He misses by a mile, but he's going to give um, Warren advantage to attack that one next time it swoops down on him. Warren's going to stay ready. It's Valeria's turn. She's going to shoot that same one with a fire bolt. She'll have a bless. That's a hit for 10 points of fire damage to that owl. Then we got Al turn. That Al comes swooping down. Warren was ready, so he attacks it with advantage. Uh, that's 14 as a hit. And the warrior is using a long sword for d8 plus 2. 8 points damage. Okay, and then that thing attacks Warren back. Talons. 21 hits him. A 5 will miss Ooh, for nice. the fighting style. Tony blocks it and the thing flies back. Tony, your turn. Okay. Uh, I will try and throw Javelin at it to try and finish it off. Or, yeah, it's probably out of range, so let me just move up to 3 and just chuck it straight up. 17 for 9. You got it. Dead. Move back. Zarelk, your turn. Okay, I'm going to move here, and I'm going to try to menace any owls that come by with my torch. Gotcha. Wait. Gotcha, gotcha. And... You're trying to hell yeah? I'm going to uh, Guiding Bolt this one right here. Okay. 12 plus plus. Uh, coming right up. Wow, 19 Radiant. That killed it. Six. And whoever attacks its corpse has advantage. <laughs> All right, Kralin, your turn. All right. Um, I will. Uh, I'll just stay here, and I will. Uh, um, Sacred flame, the one to the south. He it tries to dodge the fires. Fifteen does. Sleeping one keeps sleeping. Dalson, your turn. Just one left, and well, two's left, but one's sleeping to firebolt it um there it is there's the button 12 to hit that's a hit believe it or not for five fire after Dawson, very good that owl's turn so it comes swooping down but then flies away from the fire and disappears okay and then antonio your turn uh, Antonio will take a short bow and say, should I shoot it? 
the last one? Mm, no, we must let the sleeping beast lie. Okay, he does nothing. Warren does nothing. Splary does nothing. Tony? Uh, I will also do nothing. Okay. Who wants to shoot at the sleeping thing first? Splary warns you, it won't be asleep for long. Anyone? Cruise on that. Next to, I'm going to get up. Uh, can I get up next to it? Climb up there? It's 20 feet up. Um, you can start climbing, yeah. Put your uh, shield away, put your hammer away, and start climbing the rock wall. Yes. Okay, and then get up there and then get your hammer out. Yep. Okay, anyone else want to take that position? Okay. And then... I'll move up, I'll move up just so if it swoops down, um, All right. it can't. Dawson, fire away. I assume you'll go first. That's a hit for five. And then Antonio will shoot his bow at it. It's after your shot, it's awake. Antonio's bow is a miss. And then Warren just readies. And Spalaria shoots her firebolt for a d10. One point. And then Tony? Uh, is it still asleep? No. No? Okay, javelin. 18 for big four. Nice. And then Zerelk. I am not sure what happened, but I cannot click on my token right now. Hmm. You might have to reload. Sometimes you have to reload. Yeah. Alright, so I will reload. I will get between um, be between the owl and the rest of the party with my um, porch, because I think I made the other one go away. And I'm seeing that this one will go away, too. Got it. Hell yeah, your turn. Mack it. Uh, am I... Uh, can I use a two-handed warhammer? Yeah. Or do I... yeah, you can okay. do two-handed now. 24 for 13. Wow. You demolish it. Okay. So you guys regroup. Um, you still got a ways to go through the snow, and you got to get there before the um, blizzard hits. So you don't have time for a short rest, but do you want to do any healing before you keep moving? I would like some healing. No, uh, I could... I will take my potion of healing as soon as okay. I get back in the... Gotcha, I'll take it off of you. And we can take off the blesses, because they'll be gone for the next yep. fight. And Zorok, I'll roll your potion for you. You got back seven hit points. Mm, perfect. So you got full. I will top off Hylia with uh, four lay on hands. Thank you. Okay. Um, Spolaria is at seven out of nine. Does anyone want to heal her at all? I'll put two into her. Two. Got it. Okay. So you head back uh, towards the mountain through the snow. After about another hour of travel, you happen upon the frozen remains of another caravan member and perhaps other victims of the owls, by the look of it. Um, she froze solid while preparing to drink a potion, evident from the vial clutched in her hand. She is also wearing a platinum ring set with a large sapphire that looks pretty valuable. You don't know who she is. Uh, she might have been a merchant or someone that you hadn't met on the caravan, uh, but she must have the same idea as you, you know, looking for her shelter. Anyone want to try and uh, get that potion vial out of her clutches and taste it? I'll do that. It's a potion of healing. So you got one extra potion of healing, should you need it. We'll say, if anyone wants to use one, it's on them when that time comes. Uh, but if you keep it till the end, then someone will get it as treasure. So use your free ones first, for sure. Okay. Um, so continuing on. After another hour of travel, so four altogether. You've reached the mountain slope, but can you find a cave? So, um, you're searching in the numbing cold, and you need to find a cave before you start getting frostbite. So I'm going to need your very best survival skill person. They could have guidance, they could have uh, assistance for advantage. I have a plus three with training. Anyone better than plus three? 
Guided. Uh, plus five. So, Kralin, right. go ahead and make a survival check with advantage and guidance. Build an igloo. Oh, we're going to well, need to get a guidance. going to need a four in that guidance roll. A big igloo. Guidance coming up. Need a four. Oh, a three. 14. Didn't quite make it. Okay. So, you all get one level of exhaustion, and Spolaria goes Ooh. up to level two. Ugh, gross. And this was for, uh, like, uh, it doesn't help to, to have that, like, little fire thing. My little fire thing. No. Hmm. Nope. Boo. So put a orange one on all your tokens. All right. So you finally do find a cave, but not before you start getting frostbitten. So... A cave. You find a suitable cave, finally, and inside it's spacious and warm. A tiny stream flows from a crack in the wall and collects into a pool. A naturally formed cave contain, This naturally formed cave contains a number of tunnels and small chambers. The most curious is a short tunnel leading from the opening chamber, which transitions to worked stone. Um, so you guys could actually take a short rest here before you explore the caverns. But before you can do a short rest, this happens. Spelaria notices that Warren is missing, the warrior. On cue, a scream is heard above the wind outside. Retracing your steps quickly, you find what's left of Warren just outside the cave. He's been torn limb from limb and his component parts are arranged in an unusual geometric pattern in the snow. You find tracks of a large creature, a bear perhaps, quickly being erased by the wind-driven snow. Hmm. Uh, you can make a... That wasn't a bear. So much for those tempies. You can again <laughs> make a <laughs> survival check, uh, Kralin, to see if you can tell what these tracks are. You have advantage. All right, let's, let's do it. It could be all there. And roll a guidance check, D4, please. Uh, hell yeah. Mm, 14, you're not sure what it is. Okay. So, short rest time. You guys can all take a short rest. Spend uh, hit dice, get your hit points maxed if you need or to. Or all maxed out. Um, do you even need a short rest? Is there anyone that gets anything back with a short rest? Nope. We'll get I don't need one. After Maybe that. hell yeah would get your... No, you got that back last night, didn't you? Your channel divinity. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, and I didn't use it. Um, inspiring leader, do we get that with the short rest? You do. We do get it with the short rest. Yeah, All so right. you probably go on to four ten pit points, everyone, in the party, and who's the sixth person? Well, obviously not the warrior. Not warrior um, anymore. <laughs> uh, let's roll a d6 between Antonius, Varelia, and the owl. The owl. Okay. So, four temp hit points for the Owl. Very good. Oh, Arcane Recovery, good. Okay, uh, this is actually a good break place for us to take our first break. Uh, so we'll take a break until uh, 15 after, so 10 minutes. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So apparently, Mike, my dog, is extremely passed out right now. <laughs> We took him to the dog park for the first time. And oh, we were there good. without. We didn't really notice, but we were there for about an hour. Uh huh. And it's about a half mile there, half mile back, and he is conked out. <laughs> so I'm gonna go check on him.
pup is sufficiently tired. I bet. <clears throat> Although he does not like the nail trimmers. We're trying to try uh, trim one or two nails whenever he's super tired. That's a good time uh, to do it. But he kind of like wakes up like, oh, I don't like this thing. <laughs> so. We had hunting dogs, and they would be just demolished after we'd go hunting. Mm, what kind Cause, of dog? Because he'd run uh, Britney Spaniels, usually. Hmm. So hunting pheasant and quail and stuff. And they'd oh, just run nice. and run and run. And they'd get home and lie down, and then they could not move after that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're spoiling him by letting him be up on the futon all by himself on the towel. But it's just like a giant, good, comfy mat that he can stretch out in. So did you guys see the upcoming, like, D&D &D game days that they're going to have? All you gonna, are you going to run any of them? Yeah, I'm, in, oh, I've, I'm signed up if they let me. I'm going to run the first one. Cool. I'm going to be doing DDAL 1002. Um, are you going cool. to? Are you planning on doing the DDALs for our Tuesday night games? All of them? Um, not no, not necessarily. The DDALs I just kind of fit in wherever. Okay, so, so if yeah, I do, signed up, it'd be a good idea if, if I want to do those to sign up. For yeah, those. yeah, definitely. Uh, will you email out when you know if and when you're running one? We'll do. Yeah. When are they? Um, I want to say November 13, 14, 15 is the first oh, one. okay. And they'll have lots of Moonshade adventures, the DDAL adventures. I don't know if they're going to have an epic or not, but uh, we'll see. I'm sure they'll start having epics very soon if they don't. And they're going to do those like once a month. All right, well, let's get started again. So, um, you guys found the cave, and the warrior was killed uh, outside the cave as he went out to like relieve himself or something. Um, and now you go back in to explore and see what you found. Inside the cave, <clears throat> you find... Oh, and let's just recap what treasure you found so far. Um, so you got 20 gold pieces for each of you for your share of the dark blue velvet pouch and silver coins from Leskin. Potion of growth that you're going to split up at the end, and a parcel of the homemade goods that you'll split up at the end. And then um, another 20 gold pieces for each of you for your share of the platinum ring set with the large sapphire, and a potion of healing that you have to be split up at the end. Okay, and then exploring the cave. So, you find a short tunnel that branches from the first chamber that transitions from unworked stone to a corridor of hewn stone, and it ends in a grand chamber about 30 feet across, with an ornate ceiling about 40 feet above your heads. The walls are carved in de detailed bas-relief carvings, and they depict numerous wizards casting spells that alter entire landscapes. You can see Spolarius getting very curious, and so is Antonio. Um, The carvings also depict floating cities as grand as Neverwinter or Waterdeep, and ancient gods who are somewhat familiar, yet distinctly different from the ones revered today. There's an ice-covered door set in the far wall. It may have writing on it, uh, but it's under a thick layer of ice. You'll have to chip that away or melt that away first before you can see what the writing is on the door. There is an ancient camp nestled by the door with a fire pit along with some old but dry firewood and various camping supplies. And the backpack is covered by a paper-thin layer of limestone, deposited by years of water dripping from above. In addition to the door in the chamber, there are two tunnels that lead into darkness. So, inspecting the bas-relief carvings on the walls, if you're trained in arcana or history, you can make a check. And you'll have advantage from Antonio and or Spilaria helping you. I have history, so I will do history. Okay. I have history. So that's a 16. Well. Oh, nice. 820 on that one. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing you note 
is these old gods are no longer worshipped. For instance, the goddess of magic referenced is Mistral, not Mistra, the current goddess of magic. Um, then you have the floating cities were unique to the Netheril Empire, and it's been gone a thousand years now. Then you have the pictograms identifying this particular ruin as a, this ruin that you're in now, this cave complex you're in now, as a school or research group that studied necromancy. And last but not least, the ruins date from the second age of Netheril, the Nether Age, when the Nether scrolls that allowed the Empire's magical might to flourish were found, and that was about four to five thousand years before the present age. So Spalaria is beside herself, eager to explore the rest of the place, eager to find out what's in that door. Um, Antonio's a little jittery and cautious, just a little nervous about everything here. He's He came here for, you know, finding plunder and such, but he's a little nervous about it being a necromancy stronghold. What are you guys thinking? Well, there's got to be some great uh, arcane tomes in here. Yeah. So... I definitely want to uh, explore further, and uh, I'd like to try and melt that ice with some fire bolts. Got it. Uh, Tony, any idea what you want to do? Might be muted if you're talking. I'm sorry, was that me? Yep. Uh, I will head over to the ice door to help chip that away. Okay. Hell yeah. Anything you want to do? Uh... I'll study the uh, carvings further and, and see if I can't find anything that uh, talks about lost uh, uh, forgery skills. Okay, Kralin? Forging skills, not forgery, that's different. <laughs> Kralin? I think I will uh, cast uh, Detect Magic and see if I see anything uh, sticking out in here in particular. Gotcha. Um... Last but not least is a relic. Bring on the backpack and see if he can chip away the, the paper thin lime stone okay. and see what might be preserved in the back. Okay, Zarelk, make a uh, either investigation or nature check, whichever you're better at. I think it's the same. Okay, um, you chip away the limestone, no problem. Inside the backpack, you find a tattered journal, um, a leather pouch that contains various pebbles. They're painted in uh, sparkly paint and all sorts of different shapes and sizes. I'll show you a picture of those here shortly. There's also a vial with a golden syrup in it, a slender silver needle, and a silver trade ingot. Um, the trade ingot stamped from Waterdeep. Uh, you can't tell from the stamping exactly how old it is, um, but it, it doesn't look real modern. No. So does anyone want to try to take a sip of the vial of the golden syrup? Uh, hell you will. Okay, that is a potion of comprehension. So like comprehend languages, that's what it would do. Nice. The uh, potion, of course, lights up with your detect magic. Kralin, and also the slender silver needle likes up with your detect magic. Hmm. So you're not sure what that slender silver needle does, though. Might need to identify to tell what it, what magic it has. Uh, clearing the ice is no problem when you start casting your fire spells. <coughs> Spalaria will help you, and Tony will help chip away. So you're able to clear away the ice in the door pretty quickly, revealing the door underneath. So, in addition to the inscription in Draconic, well, there's an inscription in Draconic, that's the first thing, there are also depictions of stones around the outside of the door and a chute under the text in the middle of the door. All right, so let me clear out an area that you can see um, because you got the journal, too, that you can look at. So, over here is what the journal says. Expedition Day 9. Ruins definitely Netherese design. Column scrolling indicative of late Congenio era, approximately a thousand years old. Expedition Day 24. Iconography and dialect consistent with arcane applications, 
perhaps the site likely had some but significant magical power or importance. Reference to the staff. Too vague for more conclusive conclusions at this time. Item used to craft Congeo's pebbles? Question mark. Expedition day 11D fish. Must open the door. Door is hungry. Door wants my hand to hold the staff. Door mustn't get my hand. Perhaps I can find someone else. Yes, someone else can cut off their hand. I could even do it for them. Congino would know. He has pebbles. And then, uh, also in the journal, not in the pages of the journal, are the various um, notes about stones. And I should show you the stones you found so far, too. So you found the stones in the pouch inside the backpack, and they look like these stones over here. And you're able to match them up with the uh, list of stones that's in the journal. So you got a stone of protection, which is dusty rose prism, stone of fortitude, which is a pink rhomboid, etc. down the list. But then it says there's four stones that are missing. And it tells you the two-color stone is a sphere. The stone of awareness isn't pale green. Self-preservation is a gem. I'm sure of it. The stone of awareness is a rhomboid. The prism is pale green. The stone of self-preservation is silvery. I know the stone of intellect is a mixture of two colors. And the stone of mastery isn't dark blue. So you've got all of that. And then you also have this writing in Draconic on the door. And i got a picture of the door here for you. So here's the door. It's a portal that's circular in shape. You don't see any handles or anything, but there certainly seems to be a seam around it, like it could open. And this draconic writing in the center of the door is not any language any of you understand, but um, Spilaria seems to be very interested in it. And... Uh, she says, I think, I think this is ancient, ancient Netherese writing. I think maybe I can decipher it. If you just give me a couple minutes. Any okay. of you speak Netherese? Nether who? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me double check and make sure she can. Yeah. Yeah, she can, she can do it. So, she translates the writing for you, and you guys write it down, and it says the following. Right here. It says, protection of the leadership leads to mastery, but reserve your intellect for self-preservation. Your fortitude is due to your regeneration and absorption of substance. Awareness of insight leads to supreme intellect. All right. So that's, well, that's the order we got to put them in. That's all the stuff you found. Talk amongst yourselves. You also notice that there's four missing. Uh, four that don't match the door. You notice that the ones you have do match the door. Uh, but there's four on the door that you don't have yet. And in this chamber that you're in, there is the passageway back, the door ahead of you, and two cave mouths. One to the left and one to the right. So, Tony, you said you think they go in the order written in that uh, draconic inscription? Uh, likely, yeah. Okay. And, and then I'm working on the four missings. And did you want to head down one of the two tunnels? Uh, yeah, let's head down the left of the two. Left tunnel, okay. Left tunnel. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the left tunnel winds into the mountain uh, some distance before it comes into this cavern, this dry cavern ahead of you. Um, when you get to right here, your lead guy is like basically right here, you can hear scuffling and growling like little dogs fighting. But it seems to be coming from near the ceiling ahead of you and around the corner. Like little puppies? Mm -hmm. Or the dogs we fought earlier? Uh, like little puppy dogs. Growling. Like little, maybe like lap dogs. Growling and oh. fighting. Dibs on the cutest one. 
and you guys are back up here actually. So what do you want to do? You don't see him yet. You just hear him squabbling. Um. Hmm. I'm guessing Dalson's the only one not in full armor. I'm only wearing a chain shirt. There. We could barely hear you, uh, Dan. I think he said he's wearing a chain shirt. Yep. Yeah, he's pretty quiet. Gotcha. Z-Relic with the Wisdom or a Dex check. He has no armor. Actually, that disadvantage stealth is wrong, right, Z-Relic? I think so. With I don't a, think chain shirt gets disadvantage. So z -Relic's pretty stealthy amongst your group. Antonio's pretty stealthy. Spolaria's not trained in it, but she's not wearing any armor. And of course the owls, very stealthy. Oh, Dalson. Just send send your owl boy in there. Hell yes not. See uh, see what's going on. Sounds like a good plan. I'll send Oliver in there to um fly a bit, around a yeah. bit. Okay, I'll try to find the cutest one. Oliver goes flying in. Go to make a dex I... check for Oliver. Can I... Yeah, you sure can. So Oliver's got guidance when he wants to use it, Dave. Go to make a All stealth right. check. So the first is a 13 stealth. He goes flying in the cave and he sees... Uh, do you want to keep that 13 or use the guidance on top of it? Whoa, guidance it guidance. for a big old 15. Okay. He sees little balls of uh, flesh flying amongst the slag tights hanging up on the ceiling with four little eye stalks sticking out of them, and they're squabbling with each other. They're, like, running and bashing into each other and tumbling around and such like that and just having some sort of argument. And you see on the ground below them, right, kind of in the middle of all three of them, uh, two small little stones. You can't make out exactly their shape or their color from that distance, but there's definitely two stones down there. Do they seem like they're fighting over them? Yeah, they're squabbling, arguing, play fighting maybe, or real fighting. They're biting each other, tugging at each other's tentacles, rolling around up there in the ceiling. And they don't see the owl, and he ducks back out of, out of sight. Well, it seems to me that um, these are the stones we're looking for. And I'm not sure we can sneak in and snatch them without uh, killing the critters. So maybe that's what we need to do. I can try. Especially with your spells. I I'm willing to try to go in. Z -Rock. Okay. Z -Rock. Okay, so you want to do a guidance on Z-Rock? Yeah. Okay, z -Rock, your guidance. You're going to have to make one stealth check to get in there, kind of dash in when they're not looking, and dash back out. So we're going to make All a stealth right. check. Oh. Why couldn't that be flipped? Oh no. Okay, so z -Rux trips, stumbles, knocks some rocks aside, gets your guys where you want to be. You can be like all basically on the edge of this rock over here, ready to pounce into position, either on the south side of it or the north side of it, wherever you want. And then once you're happy, roll initiative. Now you all have disadvantage on this next of checks. So you got to roll twice and then type in the lower one if it was uh, the first number you rolled. Okay, I just need to say something. Whether I had advantage or disadvantage, I had the same initiative for every mm. Okay, everyone ready with that? Let me roll those guys. Okay, so this one, uh, the one to these turns and looks and sees Z-Rock sneaking in. And it, uh, do they talk? Let me see if they talk. It, uh, it, like, talks, but it's like, it's almost like it's mimicking a sound. It just says, dog, dog, dog. 
like it's saying dog over and over, and then uh, shoots you with an eye ray. Probably two of them, as a matter of fact. Uh, eye ray. Two rays, two rays targets you see. Okay, the first ray is to uh, daze you. DC 12, wisdom saved, and not be dazed as a relic. No problem. The second eye ray is to re-roll until I get something other than one. Four. Telekinetic. Uh, it's going to try and push you up to 30 feet. DC 12 deck saved in the gate. No problem, Zorok. You withstand both rays. And then the next guy uh, then shoots his rays at you. He'll fly to there. Let's see. No speed to off screen. You see. He's going to fly right on up to you. And it says bite, bite, and tries to bite you with a 16 to hit. Uh, you knock it aside with your shield, and then it flies back up to the ceiling, but that provokes from attack opportunity from use the rock. Uh, 10 is a miss. Okay, then hell yeah, your turn. When so I these guys are one, all basically two, 20 feet up. Four, five. So I'll move to there, and I will... Well, the ceiling's 20 feet, so they're 15 feet up. Toll the dead on the one directly above me. Okay. Wisdom save for that guy. He gets a... Dang wow, it. they got a plus four and save, 16. Oh, wow. I'm not going to do that again. Okay. Um, so, after hell yeah, the last of the gazers comes over here and you're told the dead spell it's got a verbal component I'm not sure what the words were but it repeats the words back at you and then it shoots two eye rays at you by Morden's by the sound of Morden's forge ah it says forge forge uh, four is telekinetic so DC 12 deck save to negate that you dodge that ray then the second ray is fear DC 12 wisdom saves not be overcome by fear you are not overcome by fear Dalson your turn they're all 15 feet up in the air, Dawson. Okay, well, let's see how many hit points they have. I'm going to fire a magic missile and land one missile on each one of them. Okay. Oops, not that button. Let's see. Here it is. Two, two, and three. They have more than two, two, and three hit points, it turns out. And I am then, unsurprised. After Dawson, Antonio's turn. Antonio sees that he's got Tony going next. So he's going to go one, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve to there. And then he's going to give Antonio advantage on attack versus this gazer, the close gazer. All right. Is he giving himself advantage? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Tony advantage. Oh, okay. That's it for him. Tony, your turn. All right. I'm going to move one. Hold on. Sorry, I can't push a talk and move. So one, two, three, four, uh, five to get there. And then I'll attack with a javelin on the gazer for um, advantage. Fire away. Ooh, crit for 11. Okay. Uh, Turns out, Tony didn't give you advantage. Uh, Tony was wrong. He'd only give advantage in five feet of someone. Uh, okay, okay. So, ten for seven? <laughs> ten missed him. Okay. And then, last movement is six. Okay. Turn. Splaria comes rushing in. One, two, three, four, five, six. There. She can see the south guy, so she'll firebolt the south guy. That's a miss. And then, Graylin, your turn. Um... Let me step out here, and uh, I'll, uh, how far did I move? Five. Move to there. Bonus shillelagh action. I'll try a, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try a sacred flame on the, you know what? I'll do a, I'll actually do a guiding bolt on the closest gazer to myself. All right, go for it. Wow. 
That's not good. That's not good. It's a relic, your turn. I'm assuming that I tripped over the rock before I got to the pebbles. <laughs> yep. Oh, and I should put where the pebbles are at in case you guys want to grab those guys. Yeah. They are... Right over here. Where that target's at. Okay. What and are the pebbles? It's not... Those it's are the those time. are the two stones that were on the floor. That now that you're a little bit closer, you can see they have coloration and oh, strange nice. shapes. Okay, when you get all the way to them, you find that they are. Mm -hmm. Let me double check here. Okay. All right. Looking back at our picture of the stones. Double check, make sure I describe the right ones. They are this guy and this guy. So you find those two stones on the ground. Those two guys right there. Very nice. All right, so you can okay. move there and pick them up if you want. Yep, that's what I'll do. Okay, you can finish your move as far as you want. Uh, that round is over. The Gazer's turn now. The South Gazer. It shrieks when it sees you have the stones, and it turns and fires eye rays at you, Zarek, Zarelk. Uh, the first one is Frost, 12 deck save, or 16 cold damage. Don't forget, you have inspiration if you want to use it. Uh, well, Too I... late now. <laughs> so Zarelk goes down, um, so he yeah. won't fire a second ray at you. Instead... He swoops on down to the ground, picks up uh, one of the stones in its mouth. Uh, that would actually be free action, yeah. Picks up one of the stones in its mouth and flies over to here, back up to the ceiling. And then he turns and he eyes any of you that are about to move. Uh, it's got a clear shot on Tony, so he'll fire a ray on Tony. That's fear ray, Tony. Or, yeah, Tony, okay. uh, DC 12 wisdom save as you feel fear. Ah! So you're afraid. That's going to give you condition fear. Can't move towards it. Um, yeah. Can't only move close to that guy. You have disadvantage on checks and attacks when you see him. Okay. And that'll be a little broken heart here. Oh, and all of you, just a reminder on your exhaustion. One it's level on ability check. Yeah, disadvantage on ability checks. And poor Spilaria, I forgot her speed was halved. So good thing she missed with her shot because she actually had to dash to get there. Okay, so the first gazer is done, and this gazer now has one of those two stones in his possession, in his mouth. And then the next gazer's to go is right there. He flies down and grabs the other stone in his mouth. And then he will shoot I ray at Tony and I ray at Hell yeah. First one is Tony. So, Tony, you get a Dazing Ray, 12 Wisdom Save, or you're Charmed. Well, not Charmed, but... Ah! So you're half speed and disadvantage on attacks till the start of your next turn. Uh, what do we okay. do for Rays? Uh, Daze, we'll do that. Okay, then, hell yeah, you got Telekinetic Ray, DC 12 deck saved to negate being pushed. You are pushed because you're a pectoral object of less than 10 pounds. We need my creature push up to 30 feet. Okay, so he pushes you back. One, two, three, four, five, six. All the way back to there. Such bad manners. Hell yeah, your turn. Alright, I'm going to move. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to use a bonus action healing word on our unconscious buddy. Three back. Nice. The relic, you're back to three hit points back. And then I'm going to use uh, Toll the Dead on the gazer next to uh, Zarelk. Toll the dead, wisdom save. 21. Never mind. Gazer's turn. This gazer right next to Helia is going to shoot some rays down at Helia. Uh, first telekinetic, 12 deck save, Helia. And then two is fear, uh, 12 wisdom save, Helia. You are oh, good. Yeah. Okay, Dawson, your turn. All right, I'm going to step out, and I'm going to firebolt the one with the purple stone in its mouth. Gotcha. Take that. 
good time. That's a hit. Six damage. Six fire to the guy. After Dawson, Antonio. Hmm. No one's down, right? No. Nope. So he will just shoot at the one by Helia with his short bow. 19 to hit for d6 plus 2 damage. 5 points of damage to it. Then he's done. Tony, your turn. Alright, I'm going to give the Blessing of the Phoenix Soul to Dalson, myself, and uh, Kralin. Do you have uh, ranged spell cantrips? Or like ranged spell attack cantrips? No, not, not to roll. Okay. Uh, so Dalson, myself, and Antonio for Bless. Nice. Good idea to do while you're at Dazed and everything. Yep. Antonio's Blast. After Tony is Spilaria. Okay, it's so moving at half speed. So one, two, three. And then shoots at the Gazer south of Helia. With a one to hit. Kralin, your turn. All right. Um, that Gazer south of Helia, it's pretty focused on her, is that right? It is. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll just try to sacred flame it, I guess. Deck save. You got it. Two points of radiant. Okay. After Kralin, Zarelk, your turn. All right. I will stand up. I'll move a little closer, and I'm gonna throw my dagger at that guy. Go for it. And probably miss. A ten is a miss. Yeah, your dagger goes arcing through the cave, skids to the far wall. Round is over. Okay. Gaze the far wall, turns at you, cackles like a like a maniacal uh, hag's cackle, and then shoots two eye rays down, one on Kralin, number one, and two on Zarelk. So first on Kralin... Uh, for Kralin Telekinetic, DC 12. I'm gonna go fly. You're not. Ooh, nope. And then uh, Dazing Ray on Zarelk, DC 12 Wisdom Save. Zarelk to negate that. You guys both negate both of them. Then the next Gazer's turn. He shoots an eye ray at Helia and Zarelk versus Zarelk. He's got a 4 with Zarelk. That's Telekinetic, DC 12 with Dex Save. Zarelk. Looks like Zarelk goes flying 30 feet. One, two, three, four, all the way over to your daggers, Zarelk. And the gazer yells out, take that! And then he shoots at Kralin with his number one, which is Daisy. DC 12 wisdom save Kralin, or be dazed. You, did, you said hell yeah first. I... Oh, hell yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you, I mean, do you, I just wanted to be fair. Yeah, go ahead, hell yeah, make your save. No problem. Good. Your turn, hell yeah. All right, um... I'm going to try... My wisdom saves haven't been doing very good, so I'm going to try a, a constitution save. Word of Radiance on the one right next to me. Isn't that like a ranged self or something? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, five. No, sorry. Five foot radius uh, from me, so never mind. I'm just, going to do. Just jump dead. super high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, jump 10 feet boom. You, use your inspiration you might get 4 inches off the ground that's right uh, no we'll do Toll the Dead sorry Okay. Toll the Dead the one by you yes okay oh 11 got him alright that's 10 10 you mean he, 6 he's injured it's oh six. yeah no it's not plus I hate that about that's that. okay you got him eight, anyway you got him hell yeah <laughs> The other two gazers' eye rays all look at the one that fell down, and they cackle laughing. Uh, finish the movie we want, right. and then Dawson, your turn. Okay, I'm going to step out and firebolt the one with the purple again. Uh, Bam. Well, 12 to hit, but the blessing's not quite enough. After you, Antonio is going to go and shoot at this uh, same guy you just shot at. Give me a bless on that. Boom! Big four. Oh, and he rolled a six for 
10. He's plus 3 to hit. 13, so that's a hit. Doing d6 plus 2 damage. Dropped it. It drops. I'm going to keep him there just so you know where the uh, stone is at. Okay. He drops the ground. The other gazer cackles and laughs at him, points at him. Says, take that. And then, Tony, your turn. Okay, I'll move one, two, and should be close enough to Javelin. That's a 14. hit. 14. That's a hit. Four, six. Got it. And then three, four, five, uh, item interact to grab the gem. Okay, you got it. Take him off now. After Tony, Spelaria is going to move up closer. Ooh, wow. Ooh! And then she'll do a 16's a hit with a fire ray of four, four points of fire damage. Thing's still standing, though. Kraylin, your turn. Let's uh, see if Sacred Flame will destroy it. Deck save. It dodged Ooh. it. Zarelk, your turn. I'm going to look for my dagger real quick and pick it up. Yep. I'll move to here and I will throw my dagger again. And oh, just, you're just playing fetch with yourself. <laughs> sailing to the other side of the room. Sorelk's <laughs> done, rounds over Gazer's. Gazer goes flying for safety. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dashes to there. Get it has dolphin. to come down to just five feet off the ground because of the uh, cave mouth isn't very tall there. And next to go is Hell yeah. Alright. Six to there. Your speed's only five. My speed's only five, so I'm going to move. going to be there. There you go. Yeah. Move to there. And I'm going to Toll the Dead it. Toll the Dead Wisdom check. It resists. Dolls in your turn. Damn it. Get it, Dolphin. This is it. I'm going to get it. It's careening, careening down the hall like a runaway bowling ball. You nail it with a <laughs> firebolt on fire. It smashes against the wall, rolls into the corner there, and burns in a heap. And you rush over and grab the gem before it cracks. Okay, the gazers are dealt with, and you got these two new gems. Um, they are right here. And I think, maybe, I don't know if you guys can control these or not. No, probably not. Oh, yeah, I bet you can. Yeah. Cool, okay. Um, so now you got the other cave mouth. Oh, and you finished exploring this, this in cave, and you don't find any other treasures in there. <clears throat> there are some animal bones and rat bones and such like that that the... Um, these things lived off of. Now, you want to go check the other cavern? I would uh, like to share with the group something. Go for it. I did a lot of thinking while I was so scared and stunned that I think I know which gems I'm missing. Uh, specifically from the bottom right there, I think if we... I have the descriptions of the ones that we don't have, so if we can possibly find a... Uh, a dark blue rhomboid and a pale green prism in the, the next room. I think we'll be able to get past that door. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, cool. I'm going to give my potion of healing to Zarel. Okay. Couldn't take that off of uh, Hell Yeah. Zarel, do you want to drink that now? Yeah, sure. There's a button for it there. Just click your token, then click the P-Heal button. They'll give you what yeah. the results are. I Everyone can take the bless that. off. That bless just lasts a minute, right? Yeah. Yep. Take the blessings off. In. Ooh, big roll. And I'll top you off with one more for uh, Leon Hands. Nice. Okay. Still got three. Okay. The other cave, then. Let me move. I'll move you guys all together as a group here for you.
Okay. The second cave you come to, you hear wet, dripping water echoing in the cave. You see a skeleton near a pool of water that's clutching two sparkly pebbles. And you guys are right here. What do you want to do? I'm going to go send uh, Oliver, see if it can fly over and grab those uh, pebbles or a pebble from the skeleton. Absolutely. Scout goes flying over there. Put you guys where you want to be while Scout flies over there. Take up whatever positions you want to be standing in. Uh, let's see, the owl's passive perception with his keen's eyesight is an 18. Does it want to be 18? No. Daniel does, but <laughs> not Tony. Okay. Then the owl sends you a warning, Dawson, of danger. And uh, you look up, kind of sensing where, Dals where the owl's looking, and you see moving. Uh, some of the stalactites that are dripping water are moving, creeping towards your party. See one there, and one there. So, everyone roll the initiative, please. Go to roll twice. Type in your lower number if it was the first number you rolled. The ceiling's about 20 feet overhead, and these stalactites are hanging from the ceiling. Did I give everyone time enough to put your initiatives in? Oh, wow, low rules. All right. First to act is... Unfortunately, the one piercer the owl did not see with his passive perception comes over the owl's head and drops as the owl's trying to pick up the stone and gets a... Hmm. Token of that? Yeah, there it is. Oh, oh not no. even Tempe's can save it. Oh no. Impales Ooh, the well owl. Well done, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> I, feel, I, I, I actually feel pretty bad about that one. Uh, let's see. That piercer's done. The other Is piercer. It? Oh. Sucking that you guys have such low initiatives. Other piercer gets over Z-Rock's head and drops on him. Uh, six is a miss. Z-Rock dodges it. The piercer's now lying on the ground beside you there. Z-Rock prone. Uh... And it's done. This pierce is lying on the ground prone. It's done. Also, it's gobbling up the owl, which disappeared, unfortunately, so now it's angry. Tony, your turn. Alrighty. I'm going to move one, two, three, four to get next to my friends and then attack the prone uh, Go for piercer. It. So a 20 for 11. That's a Ooh, hit. Big roll. 11 points damage to it. Next to go is the last piercer. Hey, would that second piercer have taken damage? It says it takes half damage it would have dealt if it misses. Yes, they should have both taken damage, actually. Oh, only if it missed, that's right. Uh, it would have dealt eight, so it took four. There we go. Okay, and then the last piercer. Luckily, you were warned it's far enough away. It takes a dash to get over your head, hell yeah. So it's up above your head. And your turn, hell yeah. Well, I'm going to take a whack at the one who's down next to me uh, for five. Mm -hmm. it, uh, 23 for five because it's prone, right? 25. Yep. Five. Got it. And then I'm going to move. Uh, it, does it appear that I'm out of the one above me's threat range? I. You haven't left. You have to release your mouth mouse before I can see. Yeah, it's there. Okay, 
But uh, but it's up on the ceiling, so it's it on the ceiling. How far above that is me? Be, twenty feet. Me? It's twenty feet up. So I'm gonna move down to here. Okay. Uh, Zerok, your turn. Uh, well, I know that things might be able to attack, and I don't know about this thing, so I'm just the prone one. I'm gonna just. Oh jeez. Uh, ten. Yeah, does not get through its hard armor. Antonio, where's he at? Down there. He's going to come up. One, two, three, four to there. He's going to give uh, Dalson advantage to it. No, not Dalson. He won't attack it. Splitter won't attack it. Kralin. He'll give Kralin advantage to attack this. Well, they're all prone. It doesn't matter. He just attacks it. Um, with his short sword. Nine. No, it does not get through the armor, but he has advantage. 16. 16 does get through the armor. So with the 16 to hit with his short sword, he does d6 plus 2 piercing. 6 points of damage piercing. That piercer is dead. Dalson, your turn. Got one on the ceiling above Tony's head and one over on the ground with your owl impaled. Um, I guess I'm going to shoot the one by Tony's head because I don't like my chances of hitting the one on the ground. So here we go. Firebolt. 11 glances off of its armor. Spelaria will do the same thing. She'll come to there and shoot her. Firebolt. Missing. And then Kralin, your turn. All right, I will prepare Shillelagh and then uh, cast a Sacred Flame on the one on the ceiling still. Deck save, right? Uh, you got him for seven Radiant. Then that runs over. This Piercer over here goes there, and then five feet up the wall. And then Tony, your turn. Okay. I will ready an attack for when the piercer lands. Is that a, a thing I can do? Absolutely. After your turn, Tony, uh, the piercer's turn. It moves over your head and drops. As it's coming, crashing down towards you, you get your attack opportunity on it. 13 for 10. Smack it with a flail. You swing wide. The thing drops onto you. Uh, but you step out of the way. And it lands down there. On the ground. Prone. And it would have taken... Uh, I would have done 5 uh, points damage, damage, so it takes 2. Okay. After you. Hell yeah, your turn. I'm going to smack it with my Warhammer. 23 for 5. That's a hit. And then Zerok, your turn. 21 for 3. Still up. And then Tony hits it for 3 more. So that's 6 total. Still up. And then Dawson, your turn. Dawson. Where are you at, Dawson? From there, that misses. And then Spelaria will step up next to it, shoot at it with advantage from there, hitting it for D10 fire. Two fire, dropping that one. And then you guys have enough time to hit that one that's coming your way on the wall, no problem. All right, the piercers are dealt with. You can now approach the skeleton search the remains and you find that it's a long, long dead explorer. Been here for a long time from the amount of calcium and deposits that are on him. But the uh, two little gemstones nearby him look like these two. Looks like a blue rhomboid and a green prism. Ah! Wunderbar! <laughs> as they would say. So, Tony, what do you think? Alrighty. What, what order would you put those guys in? Oh, the the full order. Oh boy. Yeah. You can right. you can just kind of move them and you know have the top one here and go down. Okay. Protection's a dusty rose prism. 
Uh, I'm gonna guess that that's. Uh, is there like a prison? Okay, it's probably gonna be that one. I'll put no, it all the way over here. No, that looks like the pink rhomboid, right? Okay, never mind. It's gonna be that one. Yeah. I don't know. They look the same. Uh, leadership yeah, is gonna is be the marbled pink green sphere. Uh, mastery. Uh, oh, uh, mastery is the pale green prism that we just got. And reserve is, if anyone just knows it, go ahead and chime in and just put it there. It's the vibrant purple prism. Uh, intellect is the two colored sphere that we got. Uh, Self-preservation is the Wait. silvery gem we got. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, fortitude, also if I miss one, please uh, shout out. Fortitude is the um, pink rhomboid. Uh, re regeneration is the pearly white spindle. I'm guessing that's a spindle, a pearly white or one. Or this one, which one do you think? Who? Let's come back to that. Yeah. Let, let's Put them side like, by side. Yeah, let's do it like this. No, no. Uh, that way we're, uh, we can remember to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're, okay. Good. <laughs> Absorption, pale lavender ellipsoid. That's definitely lavender. Yep. Uh, sustenance, clear spindle. So I would then say that the clear one is the latter of the two. I agree with that. And then the uh, the pearly white spindle would be the former. Uh, awareness is the dark blue rhomboid that we got. Insight is the incandescent blue sphere. Supreme is the clear faceted sphere. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so you and slot pinpoint. those gems in one at a time into the door. And they all go into place, and then there's like a audible hissing sound as the seal breaks and the door swings open. Antonio steps forward and says, stop! And he holds the door for a second and says, let me check, make sure there's no traps. And he checks the door all around Kaboom. and uh, says, okay, I guess it looks okay. And as the door swings open... trap kills him. <laughs> the door slides open with the grinding of stone. The grand room is covered with faded frescoes of life and magic in the Nethril Empire. A heartbeat later, there's a pulse of arcane energy and letters form as sticky blood oozes out of the far wall. One by one, they spell out A-N-T-O-N-I-O. Antonio shrieks in terror and runs out of the ruins toward the cave entrance in a desperate panic. Oh, let's see if it gets my name correctly. <laughs> Does anyone follow Antonio? Is he running? Yeah, He's I'll, running for the exit, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll try to grab him. Okay. You're running after him. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Antonio, you get to catch up with him. Antonio stands in the blowing snow just outside the cave, hands on his knees and panting breathlessly. Did you see? The words barely escape his lips as a hulking white and crimson form emerges from the snow, grabs him in a huge talon claw, and disappears from sight. You hear intense screams before horde-rending sounds bring them to an end. I slowly back into the cave and tell the others what happened. Okay. Okay, so you get back. Um, um, Spalaria is desperately shaken, uh, pale as a ghost. She says, uh, we're next. We're next. And then she looks at Tony. <laughs> that should have been you. You try to appease her as you head back into the cave. Okay, so now you have one rescued person from the caravan and the door is open for deeper caverns here. Spalaria is still here but Antonio is gone. Uh, before you press on you, 
you could if you want take a short rest. Looks like you don't need to, but you want to take a short rest? Ten peas. Does anyone all generally his. get all Does anyone generally get anything on a short rest in this party? We don't have fighters. The or clerics what? do. They get the arcane. Uh, the, the wizard gets arcane recovery. The clerics get channel divinity. But none of them I, used it. Yeah, I didn't use yeah. one. Forced clerics channel divinity is not the most uh, <laughs> useful. Okay, so press so on. It's like Kirk rolling over yeah. and we can right press. Now, I don't think anyone clerics. lost tempies other than Zarel. Hell yeah! You said you have yeah. your temps, right? I do. You do? Okay. Oh, I see. You have them in the blue bar. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Blue for temps just makes sense. Just makes sense. So you press on in. Um, let's see a recap of the treasure you found. You have uh, twenty gold pieces for all of your share of the tattered journal, the leather pouch containing pebbles, paint in various colors of sparkly paint, and silver a silver trading kit. Um, the pebbles are all gone. You used to open the door, but there's a silver trading kit still, and a potion of comprehension that was split at the end. Oh, um, you didn't cast Identify, but you'll eventually find out that that's a thing called an Illuminator's Tattoo, which will be available to all of you at the end. It's a common magic item. It takes attunement, and I'll go over what it does exactly at the end. That's that little silver needle. Must be an item out of uh, Tasha's new book, I imagine. Cool. Okay, uh, grab you guys. Um, deeper in. The Pit of Sacrifice. So the tunnels that you explore eventually lead you to an elegant 10-foot wide stone bridge worked to resemble bones, crossing 55 feet to an arch on the far side of a room. The floor of the room is 30 feet below the bridge, and there is something moving down there obscured by thin fog. Weird echoes fill the chamber, and there's a faint smell of carrion. The walls are decorated with detailed frescoes depicting uh, powerful mages surrounded by scores of seated students taking notes and skeletal attendants cleaning, making deliveries, and bringing food. Under the watchful supervision of a mage, a student coaxes a spirit from the body of a recently deceased human. Several students conducting a ritual in a graveyard that calls the dead from their graves while nearby townsfolk run away screaming. Students vivisecting a screaming gnome while others take careful notes about the poor creature's anatomy. The final fresco depicts two elder mages standing over a kneeling apprentice, cutting off her own right hand. Is anyone trained in investigation? Anyone got plus five investigation? No, sir. Plus four. I've plus got minus one. Plus minus three. Minus one. <laughs> plus two, plus one. I've got plus five investigation. There you go. Make an investigation check, and if anyone else is trained, let us know. He can get an advantage if anyone else can help him. Could I toss a guidance on him? You bet. So yeah, make an investigation check, Dawson. That's a 17 plus. Um, you notice right away that all the senior mages and all the frescoes, either you can't see their right hands or their right hands are missing. Then I need a perception check from, I bet the best at perception is gonna be uh, your furball cleric. Uh, Craven, you plus three, plus five on perception. Uh, you're not. I don't. No, nah, I'm not trained in perception. Plus, uh, plus three. I think you're still the best. Go make a perception check with advantage, Craven. Okay. Carefully looking down through the mists, you swear you see hands down there. Are they right hands? They are right hands. All of them. Crawling around on the floor. Ooh. Okay. Uh, this bridge has no handrail. It's 10 feet wide. It crosses 55 feet to an archway on the other side. You've explored all the caves on this side of this room. So you'll have to go across the bridge and through the archway to go deeper. Nothing I start nothing across game. the bridge. Okay. Across the bridge you head through the passage, or through the arch, and you find several more passages and chambers before arriving at the next large one. 
Chamber of Slumbering Crystal. And I got a map for this. Let me move you to that. Now those hands were they were they like animated or no? They were moving, yeah. Ooh. They were crawling around. Okay, they weren't crawling towards us, were they? No. They were staying down there in the fog. Okay, you guys are here. Right there. Okay. The floor in the center of the chamber is broken open, and chunks of ice lay strewn about. Pictograms depicting a staff made of stone or ice, perhaps chartolin, lie in the walls, and text is carved under them in several different languages, including common and draconic and dwarvish and elvish. The chamber is frigid, even colder than the blizzard outside. The rear of the chamber is partially collapsed. The dark blue is a depression, uh, basically a pit ten feet deep. It's rough with thick walls. Take a DC-12 athletics or acrobatics check to get out of it should you fall into it. The writing on the walls is right over here. You can read it. It's in common. It says, Krenshinabon, also called the Crystal Shard or the Crystal Tower, Krishal Tirath in Elvish, was a unique evil artifact created by seven liches. It was a green crystal the size of a hand and drew energy from sunlight. It was sentient and sought out corruptible magic users that amplified their magical powers and turned them into tyrants seeking only glory, power, and conquest. The crystal shard traveled from the deserts of Zakara far to the south and to the frozen far of northwest Faroon, leaving misery and destruction in its wake. Evil undead sought to harness its power and transformed it into its crystal, crystal terith form of a monolithic tower. While various heroes achieved the destruction of the crystal terith, it had forever transformed the ice beneath and, dis and around it, infusing it with powerful magical energy and darkening its color. This substance, Shardolin, became highly sought after as an eye unbreakable magical material. We found a small trove of it and decided to infuse it with the mortal and unstoppable power of necromancy. We've created a staff of Shardolin and sacrificed seven of our most illustrious elders to it, forever binding necromancy into it. Just as the crystal shard itself was created, we inter it here in ice so that only one sufficiently powerful may take it. And it looks like it's been taken, because that ice pit is empty. Lich King Arthur was here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys want to do? Split up and look for clues, gang. Okay. Um, put you guys where you want to be in the room as you're searching for secret doors or hidden stuff or the pit or secret tunnels secret tunnels or, or the uh the cave in on the far side any of that stuff i'm looking down in the pit seeing if there's any clues down there okay um everyone roll initiative roll it twice take your lower number not much lower the disadvantage also has always been lower for me, which is convenient. <laughs> okay. The chamber shudders and an immense creature crashes into the room from behind you, filling it with a shower of snow and ice. You hear a scream, then a wet, crushing sound cuts it short. As the snow and powdered ice settles, a snowy owlbear with shards of blood frozen into its fur and feathers comes into view. It stands fourteen feet tall, and its crystalline black beak and claws are viciously sharp. Callous intent burns in its blue eyes. Spolaria's body hangs limply in its talons. Her skull has been crushed, and blood and brain matter oozes onto the icy floor. So, here it is. It's just an amazing job of protecting these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Spolari is dead. Her body now drops limp onto the floor. And roll initiative. You already sorry, did. And it's turned to roll initiative. It got a 20. Somebody a remind me why we... Why you rescued them? Also, that way, you know, three of us didn't have to die. For plot device. Yeah. Were they wearing red shirts by any chance? Can I ask you, Tom, just 
was there any way in this adventure to save them? Yeah, like... you guys did horribly. Oh no! I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm kidding. Someone was gonna die. Better than than you. Okay. The owlbear goes first. It moves one, two, three, four, right on up to Helia, and attacks her with a beak and a claws. Twenty-three with the beak for eight points of damage, Helia. Claws is a 23 for 12. Okay, so that's 16 after I take off the 10. Yep. Whew. That hurts. Yeah, that thing rips in, just tearing through Helia's uh, chain armor, even magic as it is. And then Zarelk, your turn. Well, I'm going to go up to it. And... I, I start giving it the sad eyes as I'm gonna do this. <laughs> you can grovel oh, and beg at nice. it. <laughs> That's awesome. Till the end of your next turn, you grant advantage to attack the creature uh, in ten feet that sees you to your allies. Okay, so everyone, you have advantage to attacking that thing now. Until the end of uh, Zarelk's next turn. Nice, Zarelk. Mm -hmm. Dalson. Considering that I've only got fire bolts left and I've got advantage, here it goes. 19 for three big points of damage. 19 hit, three damage. Just double checking something here. Okay, Dalson, y'all done? After your turn, Dalson, this owlbear lets out a fearsome roar. Any creature within 30 feet, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is everyone except Dalson, must make a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or be frightened until the end of your next turn. I'll frightened use my advantage. Just sides, uh, yeah, I'll use my advantage. Move closer. Nice. So, Zarelk, you're good. Tony, you're good. Graylin, mm -hmm. you are afraid of the thing. Yeah, I'm afraid, and I use my inspiration too. What uh, What does fear do? Fear can't does. willingly move towards it. Yep. Uh, but it does also gives you disadvantage. And disadvantage on, on checks and saves, yeah, or attacks. Okay. I mean. Uh, then I'm going to use my. Uh, no, I'm not, because I could need it for a death save. So I'm not going to use my uh, advantage. Okay. Made it. Nice. So the only person feared by that roar is Kralin. Dawson's done. Hell yeah, your turn. Alright, I have advantage on this Warhammer smack. Mm -hmm. 18 for 5. Nice. That is a hit. I only do 5 damage with my Warhammer. Have you noticed that? Okay, anything else? Three times. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'm going to over to here. Okay. So that, uh, cr uh, Crawling can uh, pour a potion down my throat when I go down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the bear moves with you after your turn. Uh, Helia's done. Spalaria's shouldn't be the initiative because he's now dead. Tony, your turn. Alright, what is this ledge? Uh, look that like? ledge is... is a five foot drop? It's about, it's about a seven foot drop. Just add um, two extra squares of movement to cross it. All right, uh, so one, two, so jumping down would be three, four, five. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And then squeeze on in here. There you next go. Next to my friendos, and I'll attack it with the flail. Okay. Twenty-one for big four. That's a hit. Four points. Yep. Got it. After. No more spell slots. Oh no, Kralin, your turn. All right. Uh. I will shell Haley and uh, half-heartedly hit it with my staff. Doing more work than us. Twelve, 12 is a miss. Twelve for eight. That's a miss. That round's advantage. over. Oh, do you have advantage? Oh, no. Yeah, you have advantage. That's a crit. 
Oh, but he's, is he scared? Yeah, that's a nine. Uh, oh, scared, so it's straight up. Okay, Albear's done. Uh, or see, Thomas turn. right all along. Here comes the Albear, attacking Helia it with its uh, beak. Uh, 20, do, 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 do. Ooh, 20, 20 hits still, I think. Uh, yep, it does. 14 points damage drops Helia, I believe. Wow. I'm down, yep. He's unconscious. Then it turns its talons onto Tony. 12's a miss on Tony. Rawr. Uh, Albear is done. It's a relic, your turn. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and try to stab it with my dagger. I have advantage because I have pack mm -hmm. uh, And 18. from your cower grovel bag. Four, got it. Okay. Then till the your end of your turn. I'm going to move around to here. Okay, Dawson. Your turn, Dawson. Take that, you feathered beast. Another one. After Dawson. Wow. Hell, you death save. Oh, one failure after hell yeah, Tony, your turn. Okay, let's um, let's ping hell yeah with a uh, lay on hand blip. All done, Tony. Uh, yeah. Craylin, your turn. One, perfect. Uh, that's all you need. Kirk, that's all. Well, quote Kirk, that's one you need to understand how that works. I will, uh, hmm. Let's try this. I'm gonna, uh, I'll cast Bliss. And I will hit my, uh, I'll hit, um, Dowson with one. And then the two Paladins. Nice. Very nice, thank you. And at the end of your turn, Kralin. This owlbear is going to try and shove Zarek into the pit. Oh, you got to be the six, Zarek. Uh, athletics? Yep. Yeah. No problem. That round's over. Owlbear's turn. Okay, Owlbear is laying to Tony this time with a beak. Missing miss. and a claws. Still big miss. Ooh, Tony dodges well, both. slightly miss. <laughs> Tony dodges both. Owlbear's done. Zarek, your turn. Owlbear can only hit dwarves. Part of it. Alright, so I'll go at it. Uh, so it is 16 is a hit. 5? Yep. After your turn, it's going to use one of its legendary actions to try and shove you into the pit again. Now you got to beat a 22. I can't beat a 22. Into the pit you go, you fall down, you land prone, you take 5 bludgeoning damage. You couldn't have beat it with a bless? Possibly. It's not a save. Oh. Oh, okay. Reminder that pit you're in is 10 feet deep, and it's uh, DC 12 to get out. Okay, that was one of his legendary actions after Zorok's turn. Dawson, your turn. Right, big damage this time. Oh no, another one. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of one. After Dawson, hell yeah, your turn. Stand up. And take a swat at the owlbear. Uh, 12 for 4. 12's a miss after hell yeah, Tony. I'm gonna uh, 16 move. for 5. Two, 16 is a hit. 5 damage, got it. After Tony, um, oh, let's see, it's done one push already. Now it's gonna do, I can't do that, um, it's gonna do another fearsome roar. So, again, everyone except for Dalson has, oh, no. to, has to make a DC 13 Constitution saving throw or be afraid. Oh, I'm con. No, no, not con. Wisdom. 13 Wisdom. Oh. Got it. Everyone but oh. hell yeah? Jeez. Uh, yeah. Everyone but I hell yeah. I don't even think I'm making put a, it. Put a heart like uh, kralin has got on his guy. We just forgot to take yours off, Kralin, but So, Tony and Zarelk put hearts like that. Uh, yeah, that was after Tony's good. turn. Kralin, your turn. Um, okay. I'm gonna... Well, all I got is, uh, Chalet lead staff. 17 for 4. That's a hit. Minus 4. If you guys weren't doing minimum damage, you'd be in a lot better shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kralin's done. Fine. Rounds over. Albert's turn. Albert's still going after Tony with its beak. Oh, God. Ooh. 17 damage with a crit. 
All right, so that's four tempies. Glad you have your tempies. Yep. And 13 on me. Okay, and then it's claws. 17 Miss. missed by one. Uh, Zarelk, your turn. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm actually going to come over here and try to climb. Okay. DC uh, 12, side. athletics or acrobatics, your choice. And um, hold on just a second. Do you have a shield? Oh, yeah, I'll have to take off my shield. You don't have to, but you can do it with disadvantage if you want. I'll take off my shield, okay. and, I'll, um, and I'll try to climb. Okay. So... You're out. No problem. Okay, finish your move where you want, then uh, Dawson, your turn. Oh, actually, wait. After your move, the owlbear is going to go. It's going to uh, breathe a breath of cold on Tony. Oh, boy. Tony, this is going to be... Uh, two points of cold damage, DC 13 con save for half. I feel it. And do the do the secrets from the hardcover roll over? Um, do I still have the do. resistance? I don't know if that secret is allowed in AL. Let me double check. In AL? Okay, that's fine. Let me double I think it is, actually, but let me double check. Enters the content catalog. Icewind Dale. You are good. So I rolled over. Oh. Yeah, so you have resistance. And that's good, because ice was starting to freeze over you because you failed, but the resistance makes it not. So Aha. that was the end of the Phoenix's soul. This is, is Relic's turn. Dawson, your turn. Fingertips. Oh, you hit that time this for seven. Time. Damage. Did some good damage that time. Uh, after Dawson, hell yeah. Smack. 16, uh, 16 for nine. Well done. Tony. Uh, the fear only lasts till the start of his next turn? Or can it's I say the it? end of his next turn. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just disadvantage Flail it. Big old eight. That's Miss Kralin. All right, let's try to Shillelagh staff. Thirteen is a hit. Ten. Ten points. Boom, down to one hit point. It's one more than it needs. Round is over. The bear is dying attacks. Uh, with the beak on Tony. Twenty-five for six. Tony goes uh, down. That's exactly lethal. And then. Uh, Sigma, no. Hmm. One through three, it is going to be hell yeah. Hell yeah. Gets it with the claws. Nine's a miss. Albert's done. Zarelk, your turn. Uh, so, end of its turn, I'm not afraid anymore? Correct. All the fear's gone, everyone. All right. I have an ally adjacent. I'll take my oh, ally. crap. Would a 12 have hit if I had a bless? Twelve would not know. Okay, dope. Uh, eighteen so hit. Three points three of damage down. to the thing. You stab at it. It's staggering under all your combined assaults as your weapons start digging into it. Uh, da, 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 da. The owlbear roars in frustration and outrage, rearing on its hind legs. It turns to flee, shrugging off your attacks as it barrels away. It slips on the blood slick floor by Spilaria's body and slams into the wall by the tunnel, causing another collapse that seals the tunnel behind it. So the bear is gone. The tunnel behind it and Spilaria is all collapsed. I will give, uh, give Tony my uh, free healing potion. Okay. Done. I, well, I'll heal him but for one hit point. Done. Um, Sigma be Ooh. praised. You guys survived the attack of the huge owlbear that killed all your friends. Ooh. And oh, goodness. as you explore the rest of the cavern, uh, you'll make a camp probably. I don't know if you want to rest here or not. Hopefully that owlbear can't get back at you, but you're not sure. Um, what do you think? Rest here or try and get out? Let's rest here. Okay. It's nice and cozy. Okay, you're able to explore a little bit before you do the exit over there. 
Uh, the passage looks recently exposed, probably by an earthquake or some sort of monstrous passage, and has revealed the bodies of a group of archaeologists, all frozen solid. They tore each other apart in a frenzy before becoming frozen for all eternity here. They have some gear. That's of value. You take what you can find. They also have a strange pair of goggles with black crystal lenses with brass and black leather frames uh, hanging around one of the corpses. So you spend the night. Fitful dreams haunt you. You hear uh, the sounds of crashing in the distance beyond, beyond the uh, cave-in. Uh, that startles you awake now and then. One of you swears they hear scratching like a finger scratching on a wall. Uh, but the night passes without anyone coming to get you. And you all get your extended rests. And the next day, you head on out. Is our exhaustion taken off? Yeah. The tunnel exits on the opposite side of the mountain. Below, you see the expanse of ice wind dale. The wind is calmed, but it's still snowing. A hulking shape emerges from the snow and resolves into a goliath in heavy furs with an immense bow in her hand, or their hand. They introduce your, themselves. They say, I'm Sook. Hello, it's Tony with a G. You might have heard of my younger brother, Daniel. What? By what uh, reason do you come to this mountainside? Avalanche. Yeah. Well, Just trying to make it a tent town. You can travel with me. I'm heading to the Worm Dune Crag. Uh, we can put you up there while you recover. Get you some food. Some, I have some salted meat here I can share. Or you can go on your own to Ten Towns. Uh, I'll accept her. Okay. Yeah. Same. As you travel with uh, this Goliath, they... Uh, ask you all about your travels, about the avalanche. Well, we saved three people that ended up dying, so... Yeah. They say yeah. a prayer. They say a prayer for the people that died. Or about the missing staff. Tell her about the missing staff. Um, sh they seem very concerned with that. Uh, old Goat will want to hear about that. Uh, he is our chieftain. Any other strange occurrences? Scary owlbear. I've seen an owlbear, a huge specimen, like 14 feet tall in the mountains. You say you saw it? You fought it. You fought it. It ran away. Uh, They're very impressed with that, and they have all sorts of questions about the owlbear and tell you all about Icewind Dale and Ten Towns and what's happening here. It never, the sun never rises again on this side of the mountains uh, as you travel to the, the crag. And um, you soon find out the despair and the danger that's settled upon Icewind Dale, this place that you've come to, the sun never rising, uh, just a few hours of twilight every day. And hopefully you can make a difference. And that's the end. Thanks, wow. thanks for playing, guys. We got some treasure to split up. Thanks, Tom. You bet. Uh, let's see. So let's recap the treasure. So you got goggles of night is what those goggles were. And they have these black crystal lenses with brass and black leather frames. Um, so they got that special description. I don't think they have a special power. Yeah, no special powers, just that description. Makes it easier to sleep at night. <laughs> well, the dark crystal could be uh, shard goggles. I'm sorry? It could be Shardolin. Oh. Uh, you get 20 gold pieces each, your share of the expedition's gear, and trading in the Worm Doom Crag. So a grand total of 80 for the adventure, as long as you haven't got 80 so far for your current level. You can Unmaxed. level up. Um, goggles of Night, everyone gets. The Needle, everyone gets. Uh, or the Tattoo, it's called a uh, Illuminator's Tattoo. And then we got three potions to split up. A Potion of Comprehension, potion of growth and a potion of uh, healing. healing healing so everyone roll a straight d20 please we'll see what order we pick in what is this adventure called
The frozen. It is called the Frozen North. Okay, um, so what do we got for our high roll? Looks like it's Helia. Comprehension, growth, or healing? Mm. What'd you say? Healing. Healing? Okay, hell yeah. Next to go is Zirelk. Comprehension or growth? Um, you know, I'll pass. Pass. Next to go is Dalson. Comprehension, Comprehension, please. okay. And last to go is Kralin. You want growth? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll take that. Mitch would have loved the potion of growth. Could have used it. That's true. <laughs> All right, that's it. Like I said, they got that uh, D&D game day thing happening mid-November. I'll be running DDAL 10-2 if possible. And, uh... So hopefully I'll see some of you guys get to play then. Did you say we were going to split up the uh, care package? Oh, the care package. That's right. Did anyone want the care package who went already? Hell yeah. Uh, I'll take the care package. Yeah, I, I already wrote down Frozen Potion of Healing. I don't feel like crossing it You don't it out, feel like so. crossing it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then second would have been Zarelk. So Zarelk, you want the care package? Sure. Okay, Sad. so that's what's inside the crate there. You can jot that down. You got some chocolate chip cookies. You got some herbal cough drops. Yeah, I think those are legendary items. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks for playing, everyone. What does the uh, Illuminator's tattoo do? The Illumi Oh, yeah, that's right. The Illuminator's tattoo. Uh, hold on here. And do are the goggles of night or the Illuminator's tattoo a magic item? Both of those are magic items. Wonders. But the Illuminator's tattoo know. is a common one, which means that it would not count against your total, and you can all take it. The only thing is the that. Goggles of Night does, it is uncommon, yeah. The only thing about the Illuminator's tattoo is it does take attunement. Let's see if okay. that works. So there's a whole bunch of in info there, but uh, it's all of it. I'll uh, also put a copy of that in when I send out via email, too. Yeah, 80 gold pieces per level, right? So if I'm going from second to third, I could have earned 80 gold pieces at